his therapist was my elders quorum president in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He was my neighbor. I had a family connection. There, there is no organized ring of abuse. It was it was debunked more than ten years ago. No, I think that occurs. Yeah, I think it occurs. I know some victims of it. Yeah, they they. I know some victims of it. I I was not in a position to prosecute it. Who was into Native American stuff? Had killed deer and get deer hearts and drink their blood and drink the deer's blood. How did your name get swept up in this whole thing in the first place? Well, well, Dan, that's probably. Uh, an entirely new, different show to get into the All right. the background of that because it's crazy and it's twisted and you, we, we can't do that in four minutes. The the bottom line is, it's all fabricated lies. Do I think that occurs? Yeah, I think it occurs. Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode uncovering the David Hamblin case. Thank you guys for being patient with me on getting this episode out. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of pieces in this whole entire case. You know, as I'm going through all the victim statements and I'm, you know, there's there's so many details in the victim statements that I'm trying to go through. And every single time I go down to verify some of these claims or try to get a little bit more information on like some of the alleged members um, and, you know, just if some of the things that they're saying are actually plausible, it takes me and sucks me down these really, really deep rabbit holes that are almost like spider webs and they lead me to all these different things. And I actually had a listener the other day reach out to me who brought up a whole nother thing. She's like, I've only seen about three or four other researchers actually covering this case, um, even though it is like, you know, there's a lot to it, but there's not very many people out there talking about it. And she said that she's been researching it for a couple of years now. And uh, she made a connection with Teal Swan. I don't know if you know who Teal Swan is. Um, but that's another thing I'm going to be adding to my list with this whole David Hamblin case because she made up, a, she brought up a lot of really good points. So down the line, we'll start introducing that again. Um, but there today, this is, uh, we're actually going to start diving into some of the alleged members of this LDS Church of Satan. And remember, I'm not saying that these people are part of a satanic, you know, an organized satanic cult that's operating within the LDS Church. I'm going through all of the victim's statements, and I'm going through all of the allegations that they have stated, and all this stuff comes and stems from the police reports that are on there. And then this is just me going through and trying to find credibility in these claims and trying to figure out if there possibly is this organized LDS Church of Satan group that's operating. So this is a bonus series exclusive to my premium Rockfin channel. In today's episode, we are going to be doing a deep dive into the alleged LDS Church of Satan member, David Levitt. And ironically, there's a lot more information out there on David Levitt than there is David Hamblin, which I find very strange. But Levitt was accused by five different victims in the Hamblin case going on right now in Provo, Utah. Thank you so much for, like, when I read it, I read Provo the first time, you know, and that's kind of what stuck in my head initially. So when people corrected me and were like, it's Provo, not Provo. It's been hard for me to change it. And I've actually been criticized for that. They're like, somebody who doesn't know how to read Provo right or saying it wrong, they obviously don't know what they're talking about. So, you know, like I said, this is my own research. I'm not a professional researcher. I'm not an investigative journalist. I'm an independent researcher. And uh, I love researching. And this is me going through and sharing the things that I have found, obviously, is is everything going to be accurate? Maybe not. That's why I say, you know, do your own research. There's so much to uncover on this case. I'm not, I haven't even fully scratched the surface of everything yet with you guys. So, so yeah, you know, that's just, it's Provo, Utah, okay? But this case is happening right now in Provo, Utah. And it is a child ritualistic sexual abuse 
murder, even cannibalism case, all that stuff has been alleged in these victim statements. I mean, this is heavy shit, guys. This is dark, and it's been taking me a while to get through it because it is really dark. And uh, it's easy to get sucked into it and not be able to find your way out. And that's not a world you want to be in. So if you're watching this on YouTube or listening on my podcast, this is only a preview of today's episode. You can find the full thing plus five other videos covering this case at rockfin.com forward slash chiller queen podcast. Or you can just click the link in the show notes. Man, okay. I have a good one for you today. I don't know if it's good. But this guy's absolutely batshit crazy. Um, I have tons to say about this guy, David Levitt. So let's not waste any more time, okay? Let's just dive in, shall we? All right, I'm going to take you back into 2020, okay? This is when aspiring Utah Attorney General candidate David Levitt made headlines when he held an impromptu press conference. I want to talk to you about two separate cases to deny to the public that he was a child rapist, a cannibal, and a member of the LDS Church of Satan. Now, these allegations stem from a complaint filed in Provo, Utah in 2012 by David Lee Hamblin's daughters. You like that? I said Provo, Utah. David Lee Hamblin's daughters, Catherine Baxter, is the one who alleged Hamblin. And this was one of the initial statements filed in David Hamblin's case that set off the series of events to come. Now, in the victim statements that were filed by Catherine and her sister, Rachel Jones, David Levitt and his wife, Shalom, I think that's how you say it. Shalom, who actually at the time was a sex therapist at BYU, Hmm, a sex therapist. Um, I think it's very important that we understand the value of what women contribute to sexuality. These two take on prominent roles in these victim statements because in the statements, well, I mean, in the statements, Shalom and an unnamed sister, it's Shalom's sister, but there's no name, it's redacted, were allegedly having an affair with David Hamblin. And this isn't surprising at all, given that Hamblin was having sexual relationships with his patients. I mean, it was alleged that he was also having relationships with his daughters, people from polygamous groups, even his sister, Susan Suki Christensen, as well as various men in the alleged LDS Church of Satan. And I mean, the list goes on and on for for David Hamblin. So it wouldn't seem like much of a stretch to think that he may possibly have had a sexual relationship with Levitt's wife. You know, they kind of share people allegedly within this cult. But from 1980s through the 1999 divorce of David and Roselle Hamblin. Now remember, David and Roselle were both accused in the victim statements of having sexually abused their daughters. But when they were going through a divorce in the late 80s, and you know, it well, it was the 1999 divorce, Hamblin's daughters alleged horrific abuse that occurred at the hands of their parents and their parents' friends, and even their associates. And somehow, even with a taped apology from David Hamblin to his daughter for raping her, the Utah County Attorney's Office could not secure a conviction against Hamblin in 2014. Now, that same office declined to prosecute Hamblin for abuse allegations from 1999 through 2003, even though the court in his divorce found clear and convincing evidence that Hamblin raped his daughters. I mean, basically what I'm stating is that they found clear and convincing evidence that David Hamblin was abusing his daughters during the divorce between him and Roselle. But then when they decided to file a claim in 2012, um, apparently they couldn't find enough convincing evidence that he was raping his daughters, even though he confessed to it. Um, He had a taped confession saying, I'm sorry, I raped you. Um, And he didn't, he didn't actually get convicted of anything, you know? And, and so it was David Levitt, a for a former Juab County attorney. And at the time he was the current Utah County attorney, just waltzed through life in much the same way that David Hamblin had. 
Now, when I began diving into David Levitt's past, I found multiple questionable adoptions, including one in which he allegedly paid for adoption fees with a car he later took back and then threatened the adoption agency owner with reprisals from his Juab County Attorney's Office. And another adoption where he bribed an Indian chief with the promise of a buffalo trade with the U- Ukrainian government. The video shows Levitt explaining how he tried to broker a deal with the tribe in Montana, offering them the ability to export buffalo meat to Ukraine as part of a request he made at the same time to adopt the child. Not to mention, at one point, he was under investigation by Homeland Security for human trafficking. But nevertheless, David Levitt did as he pleased. Now, human trafficking, remember, is one of the ways that, you know, this alleged LDS Church of Satan operates. It's like a a funding for them. It's a huge part of their, you know, alleged cult. In 2020, Levitt ran for the state attorney general's office against fellow Republican Sean Reyes. And during that time, Levitt hit Reyes with multiple public corruption charges during the primary campaign. David Levitt tried to campaign himself as, you know, like the everyman. He told the public quite an interesting story about himself. He said he quit the Mormon Tabernacle Choir to work for $8.50 an hour as a baggage handler for Delta Airlines. Hmm. And he did this while he worked as a county attorney. Now, I mean, doesn't that seem odd to take an $8.50 an hour job while also being an attorney? But his reasoning for doing this was a little bit suspect to me because he claimed he did it for free flights because apparently a Delta employee can you know, parlay 150 hours a year into free flights. Now, in that same article, Levitt noted that he loaned his own campaign $300,000. As Utah County attorney, Levitt made $185,000 to $188,000 a year. He also listed 14 companies in his campaign disclosures in which he was an officer or an owner two of which he drew additional salaries from while making $185,000 a year. Okay, so he's making a shit ton of money. A shit ton. Enough to even give his own campaign $300,000. So don't you find it a little odd that he would work an $8.50 hour job just to get free flights, but then has an extra three hundred dollars laying around, you know? He can just pull it out of his ass to put into his campaign. Now, as I mentioned before, Levitt was under investigation from the Department of Homeland Security for Human Trafficking during his 2020 campaign and afterwards, but then turned around and dinged Sean Reyes for human trafficking. This is what he stated, and I quote, Human trafficking is a problem everywhere. Mr. Reyes has done a phenomenal job. In, in highlighting the evils of human trafficking. Unfortunately, most of, the, most of Mr. Reyes' work on human trafficking has been outside the state. Now, it's a huge problem in Colombia, it's a huge problem in Ecuador, it's a huge problem in, in Central America. But I'll tell you, there's a form of human trafficking occurring in Utah that, for which the Attorney General gives no audience. Now remember, Sean Reyes was working with Operation Underground Railroad, Tim Ballard, across seas, you know, he was really helping his organization. And that's kind of what he was referring to. And I do find it a little bit peculiar though, you know, with the recent Tim Ballard allegations coming out and Sean Reyes who helped Tim and was a close personal friend, you know, it's alleged now that Reyes is now under investigation for fraud as according to um, the Fox 13, they're, they're doing a full investigation on on Sean, they've done a really good job of covering the t- the Tim Ballard situation, and you know this is this is when Sean Reyes was confronted by the investigative journalist from Fox 13. Sean, you've been for nearly the past year been a subject of criminal investigation because of your involvement with Operation Underground Railroad. Why have you not addressed this? Not aware of any criminal investigations and uh, not talking about hypothetical investigations here. 
at this time. We're talking about an investigation with the Davis County Attorney's Office, Sean. Yep, and I'm unaware of any investigation into myself, which is your question. Unaware of anything. And As a member of the Attorney General's Office that oversees the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, and as a member of Operation Underground Railroad, do you feel that OUR is taking credit inappropriately for ICAC cases? Yeah, answering questions about, is that a question? I, I didn't hear anything about the settlement. Settlement? You have a question about the settlement? You heard my question. Now the form of human trafficking Levitt is accused of engaging in is uh, adopting a Native American girl despite a federal statute aimed at prohibiting non-Indians from obtaining Indian orphans. Now, according to the victim statements, Levitt was also accused of bringing a boy for a sacrifice that took place at the LDS Church of Satan gathering, which inevitably ended in cannibalism. Now, during the gathering, Hamblin and Rizal allegedly brought their girls to perform sexually in the Levitt home, while Levitt and his wife Shalom watched and eventually participated. Although David has evaded culpability for his alleged involvement in illegal adoptions, child rape, cannibalism, and murder, his gift for opening his mouth to kind of, you know, switch feet, kind of, you know, shake the waters, create confusion, ultimately cost him the 2020 election. It also led to David Hamblin's prosecution being moved out of the Levitt's office and over to the Juab County Attorney's Office. So after this happened, Levitt tried to have the Utah County Sheriff removed from the investigation, claiming that the allegations were one big political stunt, even though the sheriff never named David Levitt publicly as part of their investigation. David Levitt outed himself during an impromptu press conference to deny the allegations, in which he also called one of Hamlin's daughters tragically mentally ill five times. Shame on you for doing that. That's, it's uncalled for. And he said tragically mentally ill woman five times to attack their, their mental health status as a way to discredit them. And it was clear that that's what he was doing. And that's, that's just not okay. Now, during the conference, Levitt stated that the case had been debunked 10 years ago and that there was no organized satanic cabal ritualizing and abusing children. There, there is no organized ring of abuse. It was, it was debunked more than 10 years ago. The case wasn't debunked, okay? Even though David Levitt, you know, said in front of everybody that, I mean, he really made a point to say that it was crazy, it was so sensational, it was debunked 10 years ago, but he knew it wasn't debunked. The case wasn't debunked, and Levitt knew that, okay? The case was dismissed without prejudice. And to gain further insight on why that was, take a listen to the audio files from the court so that you understand why this case was actually dismissed, okay? He said 